Well, it's a lot bigger than the last video, eh? We have a head on it. It's got LEDs. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get started. So we're gonna start off with the part of the Gundam I'm sure a couple people in my audience are gonna be very excited for, the feet. And these things, these boots, they're big. Just to put it in perspective, I'm a size nine and a half, and uh, yeah, the, these Gundam stompers totally dwarf my regular shoes. So these things are big, and these were fun to put together because they're surprisingly simple. They're, they're feet, there's not much to them, but we actually do have quite a bit of movement to them. We actually do have, uh, we have the toes move, the heel moves, we actually have some play in the ankle joint itself, and we can pivot. So when we eventually get the full Gundam put together, uh, we have some decent posability with these feet. And putting them together, pretty simple. Uh, everything is held together with some very common 3D printing materials. We have blue tape for the joints, just to ensure that everything that does move has a decent amount of friction to it. You shim up the joint with some blue tape. That allows you to dial in how tight you want everything, how snug, how loose, etc. For the ball joint, we have a little bit of, where did I put it? Our good friend shoe goop, the same stuff we used for the hands. That way everything does kind of move around, but it will kind of hold its position. And then also lastly, to glue the parts together that are actually permanently glued together, we have our good friend 3D Gloop Adhesive. This is the adhesive that I'm using to permanently bond any of these plastic parts together. And again, everything here is printed in PETG for the entire Gundam, and it is printed on Prusa printers. And the XL, again, came in clutch with some of these parts that required quite a bit of support. So we did some dissimilar material printing. PLA supports for PETG parts. Supports come off beautifully with that setup. But hey, before we get too far in this video, I do want to give a huge shout out to Prusa and 3D Gloop. Prusa 3D provided all the filament used in this build series. Everything you see here is either Prusa Mint Pet G or Buddy 3D Pet G printed on Prusa printers. And for 3D Gloop, they provided the adhesives that we are using for gluing this all together. So check them out, link in the video description, affiliate links don't cost you anything extra, go a long way in supporting the channel. Now back to the build. And now we've come to the part of the Gundam build that was the most fun to build so far. And I, I, it was, it's my favorite part. It's the head of the Gundam. And you could tell it's a Gundam because it has the V antenna. Holy jumping Caesar's catfish. My v antenna. Been stolen. Now oh, that's how people know it's a Gundam. What's the point of having a Gundam? You can't show it off. That's how you know it's a Gundam. It's got the V antenna. And this part was really fun to build. It came out really good once it was all final assembled, uh, but it really does kind of show off some of the downsides of the files that I'm using for this particular build. Um, I don't want to critique these files too harshly or anything. They are older files. Um, they are a couple year old files and the original designer, obviously I'm assuming didn't intend for somebody to take those files, scale everything up 200%, print it in a different plastic and judge it by modern standards. So while everything has gone together pretty well, I've had to cheat quite a bit. And by cheating, I mean, we don't have all the features that this would actually be able to do. This is supposed to be able to fully open up. You're supposed to be able to basically remove pretty much all of these white armor pieces here and see underneath the Gundam. So for example, you can see the little bit of the yellow here. There is the full assembly for the Vulcan cannon in the head in here, but you're not gonna be able to see it. Um, everything is basically glued together. I could have spent a ton of time remodeling these files to make better fitment. I did try playing with fuzzy skin in a few spots to see if that would tighten up joints. I could have also shimmed it all or glued it all. In the end of the day, 3D glued to the rescue. And since this is mostly gonna be a standing piece, an art piece is just gonna stand there, look good. And I'm only gonna want posing of like the main joints, the elbows, the waist, the knees, etc. cetera. Um, I made the choice to just, again, glue it all together, but we still have some parts that move and that allows us to get in here, push the button, and turn on the LEDs. Because if you can put LEDs in something, you put LEDs in something. And uh, the LEDs just make this pop. So we have uh, two orange LEDs in each eye, and then we have a singular red LED in the front and in the back here. So the wiring for this was very simple. It's the simplest wiring circuit in the world. Um, all the red wires twist together, solder. All the black wires twist together, solder. 
it's a very simple circuit. And to power it all, um, I just used a cheap disposable USB battery bank that I picked up at a trade show earlier this year or last year. I gutted it, so it's just the 18650 cell with the PCB. I removed the full-size USB port and just soldered on some wires. And then we still have the micro USB, so I can still recharge this. So it, it, it it's rechargeable. That's that's good, I guess. So yeah, so that is the head of the Gundam. So let's start putting together what we have to put together. And it's, uh, hopefully it still fits in frame. Okay, but actually before we start building it up, this is another part that I had put together. This is uh, the waist and hips of the Gundam itself. Uh, so this part's pretty cool. This is where the torso part attaches and then the legs will attach to this. So for the leg joints, we actually do have some movement here in the hips. Legs move forward and backwards, in and out. That'll come very handy when we're actually building up the whole Gundam and posing it. And then we also have uh, these armor slat pieces here. So these just kind of fit into a few positions here. And these are pretty cool. So these, again, they move in and out. You can position them as well. So depending on what position you end up having the legs for the Gundam set up in, uh, you'll be able to adjust your armor slat positions as well here. And these do have a little bit of move them as well to them. They're supposed to be a gimmick part where they're supposed to open up. But again, because of the fitment issue, I've been running into these parts. They're mostly just glued together into one solid part, but there, I, I still have some parts in here that do move as well for posing and whatnot. So these are the hips. They do not lie. Let's build an upper body of an RX-78-2 Gundam now. See what I mean about being worried about it being in frame? There we go. Uh, give me a moment here to move the camera. Well, it, it, it's officially taller than me. Uh, this won't be the final size for it. It's still on uh, the bench right now, but I've had to move the camera and pan the camera up here. Uh, so we do fit in frame a bit for this last little part of the video. Uh, but yeah, it's it's looking imposing, especially with the LEDs and the, and the eyes there and just putting together. It's it's nice and bulky, I love it. And uh, I can't wait till it's done. We still have some parts to build, obviously. Um, it doesn't have any legs. That's kind of important, I think. But you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant. Gundam. Yes, I know that. But those parts are printing right now. Also, we are missing the backpack as well. Uh, the backpack and the legs are critical for it standing up. The backpack actually attaches to the stand uh, that this will be held up on. So I do need to build a stand for it. I do have the pipes for that as well. It, it's, it's a pretty simple thing. While this probably could stand on its own if you really knew what you were doing, uh, something that's big and heavy, I'm gonna want it on a stand just for some extra reinforcement. I really don't wanna hear this falling over at two in the morning. So I do wanna give a huge shout out to Prusa 3D for providing the filament for all of this. Uh, all the filament you see here is either Prusa Mint Pet G or Buddy 3D Pet G provided by Prusa 3D. Also wanna give a huge shout out to 3D Gloop for providing the adhesives that are being used for this build series. Links for all of them and more in the video description. Affiliate links don't cost anything extra. Go a long way in supporting the channel. While you're down there, don't forget to like that smash button. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the rest of the series. The next part in this build series will be the final assembly of this Gundam if all goes well and uh, you're not gonna wanna miss out that. Also, we do live streams on the channel regularly. In fact, we actually built some of this on live streams. So if you don't wanna miss out on those, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And also, if you do wanna help support the channel, the content I create, and the things I do, consider becoming a channel member, Patreon supporter. I'm Taylor the Canuck Creator, and this is my big imposing Gundam that I'm gonna take off the bench now because I'm really worried about it falling over. Uh, cheers. <laughs>